We welcome you to Clarksville Academy. We are here to honor and celebrate Clarksville Academy's Class of 2020. As we begin the celebration, joining me in welcoming our distinguished guests, seated before you are Mr. Tim Sawyer, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Ms. Jennifer Heino, Clarksville Academy's Head of School, and Ms. Denise Walker, Upper School Divisional Head. Please stand for the entry of Clarksville Academy's Class of 2020.
Good evening. Members of the class of 2020, special guests, family, and friends. We're a small group, but we're a mighty group this evening. It's my honor to be with you this evening for Clarksville Academy's 47th graduation ceremony. It is our school's mission to promote academic excellence, moral integrity, physical growth, and civic responsibility. During their time with us, we want to give our students the confidence and the support to explore the world around them, to feel inspired, and to achieve their full potential with a well-balanced education. Our 71 seniors, whose names will be called in just a few minutes, are shining examples of this commitment come to life. I want our audience to know this class of scholars, athletes, artists, comedians, singers, dancers, and loyal friends. This year, in the midst of college decisions, standardized tests, completing projects and labs, and studying for many assessments, they developed special relationships with a group of kindergarten students. Many of these seniors, who are at the end of their Clarksville Academy journey, have shepherded their buddies who are just starting to travel their own school path. Our kindergartners were positively impacted by the energy, time, and love our senior buddies poured into them. This school year did not end how our seniors wished, how you as their parents wished, and certainly not how as a school we wished it would have ended. In-person courses were replaced with remote learning assignments and Zoom classrooms. It would be very easy to slip into a perspective that these final days have defined you as a group. It might make it easier for you to leave high school behind and be even more excited as your college years are about to begin. But your March to May experience is not what I think of when I think of you. It is not what I will remember about you, and I hope that it will not be what you remember about us. In four years, members of the class of 2020 have taken an impressive 128 AP courses and earned 502 dual enrollment college credit hours. Their class grade point average of 3.5 is an indicator that they have been successful in navigating a rigorous academic course load. Ten of our seniors scored a 30 or higher in one subject area on the ACT. Twelve of them were General Assembly Merit Scholars, a distinction that is given to students who have at least a 3.75 grade point average and a 29 or higher on the SAT. Excuse me, the ACT. It is remarkable to know that 14 of our seniors have earned a 4.0 grade point average during their high school career. Weston, Akani, Lily, Ellen, Joey, Caroline, Mackenzie, Will, Sean, Caroline, Anna, Rachel, Macy, and Brody. I can only imagine the number of hours of studying that the 14 of you have logged these past four years. But your teachers and I are in awe of your commitment to your schoolwork and to your pursuit of excellence. This group of seniors have been accepted to 71 colleges in 20 different states and two countries. Their stellar academic and athletic performance has earned them over $7.1 million in scholarship. As you can see, these students who are ready to leave us are remarkable. They are well prepared for the next leg of their journey. Seniors, I hope that you have truly felt known and loved during your time at Clarksville Academy. Let this serve as a reminder to you that no matter how far away that you may travel, nor how many bumps in the road that you might endure, nor how many celebrations you might experience, your Clarksville Academy family will be here for you and will remain your biggest fans. You will always have a home here at CA. Congratulations on your achievement this evening and we wish you the very best. Gentlemen, remove your caps, please. 
I would like to say on behalf of myself as the chairman of your board of trustees and the board of trustees, we congratulate each and every one of you. Major accomplishment. To all of you, Clarksville Academy, class of 2020, congratulations. Know that I'm honored and I'm humbled to have been asked to deliver this invocation. Let's take a moment in prayer. Please bow your heads. Good and loving God, this is the day you have made, and we do rejoice and are glad in it. Thank you for each graduate that sits before us today and for the contributions they have made to Clarksville Academy, our city, and to the lives of others. Thank you, God, for watching over them and guiding them along the paths that each have taken. These paths that may have seemed hard and stressful at times, but they have succeeded. This success didn't come, however, without the help of others. There were those along the way who helped guide, direct, and support these graduates. Thank you, God, for the parents, extended family, faculty, staff, friends, and all who have supported each of these graduates. We all honor them as we help celebrate this special occasion in this major milestone. But let us not see this at the end of a story, but the beginnings of another one. As each one of these graduates takes their own path, guide every decision they will make so that they can find true success and happiness in making a life of their own. God, may you grant them courage to find their life's vocation, strength, strength to always do their best, wisdom in mind, success in all challenges, but most importantly, faith to guide them in whatever they do and wherever they may go. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good evening to the family, friends, faculty, and of course my fellow graduates sitting here today. We have all finally reached this point in our lives, a point my mom chooses to deny. And we have completed not only our high school journey, but also our Clarksville Academy one as well. And while we will always carry and cherish the memories made here at CA, it is time to follow the inevitable path towards our future. I could continue with the sappy and cliche messages, but I know we all need a good laugh and maybe a trip down memory lane one last time together. So, let's start out in Washington, D.C., where most of us hold some of the most cringy memories from our CA experience. The miles of walking and photo challenges led us to new friendships and rather interesting sunburns on my part. Personally, my favorite memory was the infamous seventh grade, from the infamous seventh grade D.C. trip, was the moment I found an extraordinary friendship in a rather extraordinary place. Medieval times. You know, the dinner theater. I found it there. Well, fate would have it that I would sit next to this one moody, boy band obsessed girl that happened to share my name. There's no way you guys would ever guess who it was. Well, it turns out that even five years later, I can call Caroline Pennington my best friend, and I'm confident that we have an unbreakable bond that could never be replaced, even though she wouldn't admit it. And those five years, though, could never prepare me for the 2,699 miles that are going to separate us in a couple of months. Some of us will be attending the same school, but like Caroline and I, some of us will be separated. But again, let's not think about that. So when I was thinking of some more class memories, I was stuck. But then it dawned on me. We actually went to school with an Elvis Presley impersonator that is making more money now than I probably will after college. And for those of you that weren't lucky enough to have been Riley, he was one of the highlights of my years here. And let us never forget when he performed one of his routines at the CA Talent Show, even when he didn't go to school here anymore. Steak dinner was never the same without him. And flash forward to freshman year, when Coach McGraw's Spanish trips were born. For those of you who were lucky enough to go, I know you remember the howling monkeys at 4 a.m. and the termites we had to eat in order to be admitted into the secret society of American Ticos. And these challenges brought me closer to many of you and of course led me to discover my passion for travel and service. And the Peru trip the following year tested my Spanish skills and my commitment to helping those around me. I will never forget one of our last nights when we all gathered around for a late night reflection. 
We all burst into tears because of how amazing and breathtaking our proving experience was. Without Coach McGrath's in Clarksville Academy, I'm not sure we could have experienced anything like those short but sweet Spanish adventures. Clarksville Academy has even brought many of us to landmarks such as the Mount Everest Base Camp, Machu Picchu, the Galapagos Islands, the UK, the jungles of Costa Rica, and the beautiful cliff sides of Ireland. How many high schools can say that? And while these memories are hard to talk, let's remember some of the moments that took place here at CA. I'm not sure how, but every year there is some sort of animal in the gym. And I know you guys remember the squirrel that ambushed assembly earlier this year, and the birds that would always fly around in the gym ceiling. And there's probably one in here now. Or what about the CBL day naps, or the pain every AP Lang student felt when Mrs. Christmas came in the classroom with a great big stack of papers and told us to take out a pen. I'll never forget how Kayla, Caroline, Macy, and I could never really figure out any of our AP bio labs, but they, turned, they didn't turn out remotely accurate, but Mrs. Lindsay put up was with us anyway. Okay, so we've reached the end of our senior year. We were the first class to paint our parking spaces in August and the first class to win the homecoming week spirit stick. Seeing the smiling faces of our kindergarten buddies and the slow improvement of our very unique senior lounge will always be fond memories for me and I hope for you all as well. On the very first day of school, I remember leaving the senior sunrise at Mrs. High Notes and driving over to my new house while the sun was still coming up. I sat on my back porch with Sean and Caroline, and we dreamt about how fun our senior year would be. And while we never thought our senior year would look like this, I am so grateful that we can all be here together for one last time. And I have to admit, I was not up for a Zoom graduation. So we will never experience the early morning summer practices and the last day of school excitement again. For me, I won't lead interact meetings with Will or see Coach Trent's smiling face every day, or crash Mrs. Lindsay's anatomy class, or crack jokes with Coach John, or engage in literature conversations with Mr. Christmas and Mrs. Drake. And we all have our special moments like these that we will miss deeply, but I am so excited to see what you all will do with your future. I thank all the faculty and administrators that have put, me, put up with me these past six years, and I am so proud to represent Clarksville Academy as the class of 2020 salutatorian. Here's a parting quote from distinguished author Louisa May Alcott. Life is my college. May I graduate well and earn some honors. Take that as you will. Clarksville Academy, thank you for the friendships. Thank you for the opportunities. But more, most importantly, thank you for the memories. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Hi friends, it's here, the night so many of us have either been anticipating or dreading for the past 14 years. We know so much of what we have talked about this year has been geared towards our futures. Are we going to college? Well, which one? And what are we going to do with our lives? But today wouldn't be possible if it weren't for the people who have helped us get here. So to all the parents and guardians out there, and my parents especially, for being our biggest cheerleaders, support systems, Uber drivers, and therapists, thank you. We love you. To our teachers who constantly made us wonder if we had any brain cells left, but also helped us expand our knowledge beyond what we thought was possible. Thank you. To all the staff that make sure CA is a safe and beautiful home away from home. Thank you. And lastly, to the best friends that this world has to offer who deal with my tears, extravagant ideas, and reoccurring need for hugs on the daily. Thank you. It was about this time last year that I had a conversation that would change my view on life forever. It was right after exams, and I went to this teacher seeking advice for college applications. And I eventually asked this teacher, what's one piece of advice you would give me for senior year? 
without missing a beat, he responded, create meaningful moments. In an instant, that became my goal for this past year, and frankly, this one sentence has become the backbone of how I want to live every day. Create meaningful moments. And that is exactly what I've done with you all this year. I remember the tears welling up in my eyes as the buzzer sounded at our last home football game. Oh, and feeling the sun rays on our backs as we painted our parking spaces to make our mark on this school. And I remember dodging the ping pong balls flying everywhere in the senior lounge. I'm sure my reflexes have, have improved because of that. Speaking of the senior lounge, the Febreze. It might have not smelled nice, but that space was ours. I don't know how many days we spent arguing about how many movie posters we should hang, or painting the walls, or rearranging the furniture a dozen times. And one of my favorite things has to be the deep belly laughs and calculus that and every day there seems to be a new hole in the wall. You know, those laughs that make you feel like you're hyperventilating for a second. I've shared so many of you, those with you all this year. Now there's two things that all these memories have in common. First, these are moments that I shared with some of my favorite people in the world. If I've learned anything this year, it's that relationships are the single most important thing to you in your life. This quote from Gary Lewandowski says it perfectly. When you look back on your life and you're 95 or 100 years old, you're not going to think, I wish I owned a better phone. I wish I spent more time on the internet. I wish I spent more time at work or sleeping. It's not going to be any of those things. It's going to be, I wish I spent more time with the people I love. So cherish the people you have by your side. The second thing that all these memories have in common is that they were all temporary. That is the other lesson that I've learned during my senior year. The best moments don't last forever. You know, we tell ourselves that we'll work now and live later, and the reality is that we have one life, and it's not something to put off until you have the time to live it. It's a matter of what life means to you. So what matters to you? Take advantage of the opportunities you get and really, really soak in the moments that make you happy. Guys, we've been a revolutionary class at CA. We trailblaze, painted parking spots, the senior lounge, and we are the biggest class in our school's history. Our athletic and academic achievements are extraordinary. And when I look out into this crowd, I see a group of world changers. I see people that are persistent to make change happen, who speak their minds no matter the circumstance. I see unmatched creativity, whether it be in photography or art or music, those who will bring breathtaking entertainment to our lives. I see the next generation of athletes that will be watching on TV with our families one day. I see the kind hearts, strong individuals, and optimistic spirits that our class holds. Class of 2020, I wish you the best of luck, and I'm so, so grateful for the memories we've shared all these years. Thank you. Dr. Candace McQueen began her role as the Chief Executive Officer for the National Institute of for Excellence in Teaching, NIET, in January 2019. Over the last 20 years, NIET has worked across 20 states to improve teaching and learning through a focus on human capital and its signature TAP system for teacher and student advancement has been proven effective. In Dr. McQueen's first year as CEO, she led a vision setting and strategic planning process for the organization called NIET Now, and has overseen the growth of NIET's work, including doubling of service days, receiving more than 50 million in multi-year federal and state grants, 
releasing new reports and communication strategies that it promote teacher leadership and increasing the size of NIET's team by nearly 50%. During the last two decades, NIET collective efforts have impacted more than 275,000 students, uh, sorry, educators, 30,000 teacher leaders, and 2.75 million students. As NIET celebrates 20 years of supporting effective teaching, it continues to lead the conversation about the next innovations in education, focusing on how to best support not only classroom teachers, but te school leaders, district officials, and faculty in preparation programs. Prior to Dr. McQueen's role at NIET, she was Tennessee's Commissioner of Education for four years. As Commissioner, she led the creation of a strategic plan called Tennessee Succeeds, which became the department's plan for the Every Student Succeeds Act, ESSA. Tennessee Succeeds outlines goals and strategies to increase college and career readiness for Tennessee's one million students. During her time as Commissioner, Tennessee experienced its highest graduation rate, highest ACT scores, and largest increases in career and technical education enrollment in the state's history, while also trans transitioning academic standards and the statewide assessment to higher expectations. In 2018, Education Next noted that the quality of Tennessee's academic standards moved from an F to an A over the several years, with Tennessee also being the only state to both raise expectations and improve student performance simultaneously. Dr. McQueen has long advocated for focusing on human capital as the primary lever for change. In 2018, researchers at Georgetown University pointed to Tennessee's teacher evaluation and professional development model, which is supported by NIET, as leading to substantial career-long improvement in teachers and resulting gains in student achievement. Prior to her time as commissioner, Dr. McQueen was senior vice president and dean of the College of Education at Lipscomb University. She started her career as a classroom teacher, teaching in elementary and middle schools in Tennessee and Texas. McQueen is a member of the Chiefs for Change, serves on the board for the Branch Alliance for Educator Diversity, and the Results for America State Advisory Committee. And she was named a distinguished faculty member in the education, at education at Lipscomb University. She holds a master's degree from Vanderbilt University and a PhD from the University of Texas. It is my pleasure to introduce our commencement addresser for this evening. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Candace McQueen. Well, welcome. I'm thrilled to be here and apologize for my lateness. There was apparently something going on on the interstate, so I'm thrilled to be here with you. Um, I, I know tonight is not exactly the graduation event that any of us expected. There is a sign outside of a restaurant that I used to frequent a lot um, in Nashville, and the sign says, this has made me realize how much I enjoyed living in precedent at times. I can't tell you how many emails I received from someone who says, well, we're in unprecedented times. Um, you do want to go back when times seem easier. Along with the big logistical changes that all of us are even experiencing tonight, there have been any number of unseen challenges, anxieties, fears, divisiveness about the response of COVID-19, these all threaten our country and our communities. What each of you are experiencing will shape you forever. For most of us, we remember the big highlights of our senior year of high school, but the day-to-day -day is kind of a blur. For the class of 2020, those of you in front of me, that will be different. I know you experience the loss of some of those everyday moments. Hanging out in the parking lot, passing people in the hallway, scrambling to finish an assignment first thing in the morning, gathering together to study or work on a project. All of these things typically shape the senior spring. And you, just like all of us, have had the chance to step back and determine how you will respond. Choosing our response is a lifetime practice. We always have the chance 
to choose. Are we going to react with fear or hostility? Or will we choose grace? Will we give each other the benefit of the doubt? Are we going to practice making the most out of every breath and opportunity we're given? There are a lot of lessons we are learning right now and probably relearning through this pandemic, whether you're 18 or 81. I want to share three very brief reflections about how we can make the best choices during this time and for the rest of our lives. So lesson one, a very simple one. Make your decisions beforehand. This was a lesson my mother taught me throughout middle school and high school in particular. She would always say, decide what you're going to do before you get in the situation. Visualize what you're going to do before it happens to you. And she said, decide what you're going to do and decide who you're going to be as you go throughout life. Don't let life happen to you. You can decide to avoid unhealthy treats. You can decide to avoid things like alcohol and drugs. You can decide to not gossip. You can decide to spend time in the right ways. You can also decide not to retaliate when someone offends you. You can decide to proactively welcome others or someone who seems lonely. If you make the decision beforehand, now, tomorrow, next year, you're less likely to have the peer pressure or the impulse to act when you're in the moment. Many times those lead to poor choices. If you do make a decision later though, that you know should have been different, it's never too late to recognize it and then take the next opportunity to make the next right decision. Lesson two, edit your life. To truly have a full life, you have to edit out who you don't want to be. Athletes don't just start eating healthy or working out. They actually have to stop eating unhealthy foods, and they have to stop being lazy. To really study for a test, you don't just pull out a textbook at the last minute. You have to stop doing something else you enjoy, like scrolling on social media on your phone or watching your favorite TV show. You also have to eliminate distractions from your life. Similarly, you can't expect to become who you want to be if you do positive things, but you never stop doing some of those negative things. Kobe Bryant, who we lost unfortunately at the beginning of 2020, often said in interviews that you have to edit your life. You have to edit your behavior to accomplish the goals that you have for yourself. So I want right now for you to reflect on those goals. What are they? What's most important to you? For Kobe, he always said his goal was in everything to be the best. And that meant he had to make different decisions to be one of the greatest basketball players of all time. But he would say that always came with sacrifice. For you, that may mean you risk popularity to speak out against an injustice or speak out for someone who's being ignored. It could mean choosing to spend your time and your money differently than your friends and potentially being left out. It could mean ending a relationship or a so-called friendship that is not pushing you to be the best version of yourself. Or it could mean taking a hard look at where we react negatively and with hostility in our lives and unpack why that's happening. There could be beliefs, perceptions, or judgments of ourselves or others that we need to edit and leave behind. Lesson three, focus on what you can control. With this outbreak, I have learned all the things that I can't control. It's frustrating that there's little that we can do. Much of what we can do and can't do right now is actually being dictated by a virus. It's also being dictated by ensuring that we have a safe and secure community. Sometimes that means our individual desires and our individual abilities are limited. But there's still, in even these moments, there's still a lot we can do. We can practice self-motivation. We can improve a skill that we've always wanted to work on. We can reconnect with family and friends in ways that we may not have thought of before. 
We can learn more about a subject or a topic that we've always wanted to explore. We can start a new routine or habit. And maybe we can remember that even in a moment of isolation, you can ask others for help when you need it. By focusing on what you can do, you start to realize how much you do have control over, especially the things that really matter. This focus then can fill your cognitive space with good thoughts, not the negative ones that cause anxiety, isolation, fear, and helplessness. The author Brene Brown talks about how anxiety is one of the most contagious emotions we experience. She said recently in an interview, there are two questions that I always ask myself in times of high anxiety like now. The first one is, do I have enough data to freak out? The second question I ask myself is, will freaking out actually help even if I have enough data? She knows, and I think we know, that anxiety and the unknown sometimes drive us to do things that we wouldn't normally do. How do we step back? And how do we create calm and centered choices that can actually also be contagious to others? If we focus on taking a deep breath, asking questions, and making the best decision with what we can control, then we can actually bring healing to ourselves, our families, and our communities. So in closing, to the class of 2020, a class that has had one of the most unique experiences that I can remember in my lifetime and certainly before. I want you to know that everything you have overcome, everything you've accomplished to this point, has prepared you for the unknown and what may be next. But I want to warn you, the obstacles won't stop coming. They likely won't be any easier. You will continue to have opportunities to practice what you've learned at Clarksville Academy and in your families. And those are hopefully practicing the right choices and decisions and using your education to further your lives. In closing, I want to share a quick thought about something my father taught me that has helped me get through many bad moments and life's obstacles. He wrote me a letter before I was moving across the country to graduate school. In it, he wrote, remember, folks can take a whole lot away from you. Your money, your possessions, your freedom, and at times they can take your self-worth. But no one, absolutely no one, can take away your education. It is the very best investment you can make. Keep going. I'm so proud of you. So that's my simple charge to you tonight. Remember, no one can take away what you've earned your education. It is the very best investment your family and you have made. It has prepared you for this moment, and it will prepare you for the next one and the next one. So, as my father said, keep going. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. McQueen. Mrs. Walker and Mr. Sawyer, these students have completed graduation uh, requirements for graduation from high school as prescribed by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, the State Department of Education, and the Clarksville Academy Board of Trustees. I present to you the class of 2020 for the conferring of diplomas. Row one, please rise. Row one, please rise. Come on over and find your ex over here. Thank you, guys. Clayton Lee Allen. Uh, 
Akani Aimee Angel. Travaris Avant Austin. Isabella Monet Baca. Skylar Joy Baggett. Landon Joseph Bailey. Franco Basso. James Weston Bell. Row two, please rise. We didn't get to practice yesterday, so you guys are doing awesome. Sydney. Tiana Boykin. Garrett Charles Berger. Lillian Hope Butler. Tyler Harrison Byer. Gregory John Carter. Bailey Lynn Coleman. Jalen Cameron Collins. Shelby Antoinette Gail Cross. Row three, please rise. <laughs> Olivia Camille Cutshaw. Ellen Elizabeth Dark. Dorothy Claire Deeds. Landry Christopher Ford. Robert J. 
Sterling. <laughs> Josephine April Giarrizzo. Caroline Margaret Giles. Donovan Gerald Hardison. Row four, please rise. Victoria Elizabeth Hillfiker. Macy Leabeth Hogan. Lillian Grace Hyde. Mackenzie Marie Johnson. Victor Manuel Kinney. John Walker Knight. Cameron Gabriel Latefi. Chance Michael Lidigan. Row five, please rise. William Daniel Luce. <laughs> William Lawson Mabry Jr. <laughs> Jacopo Manini. Kelsey Brennan May. Addison Luana Means. Grace Marie Morris. Brennan Jacob Morrow. Zachary Adam Mullins.
Braylon, Jaquan, Albert, O'Neill. Nolan Kane O'Shoney. <laughs> Row six, please rise. Sean J. Patel. <laughs> Caroline Grace Pennington. <laughs> Grayson. Miller Perry. <laughs> Luke Philip Poston. <laughs> Lavanna Sonye Pridgen. Bailey Michaela Robinson. <laughs> Jacob Brooks Robinson. <laughs> Hannah Catherine Sawyer. LaShondra Demons Scott Jr. <laughs> Row seven, please rise. Rachel Lindsay Skinner. <laughs> Sterling Braxton Sloan. <laughs> Ewan Lyle Smith. Jeremiah Ray Smith. <laughs> Carl August Smith. <laughs> Harrison Keith Starkweather.
Nadia Demetria Stowe. Nathaniel Demetrius Stowe. Benjamin Hayden Stern. Darren Lee Sullivan. Row eight, please rise. Vincent Wynn Tran. Tai Yahweh Turner. Macy Elizabeth Wallace. Michael Reed Wallace. Bryce Alexander Webster. Nicholas Aaron Whitlow. Row nine, please rise. Kayla Nicole Wiley. DeAndre Ali Wilson. Thomas Jerome Wilson. Brody Campbell Woodson. Congratulations to the class of 2020.
position your tassels from right to left. If you want to toss those hats, then now we're going to have Uh, begins for our seniors. They will meet you in the parking lot. <laughs>